hello well hello me but hello everybody else once you get here i was just busy taking mumsy down from the wall <laughs> as we know i take my mum down from the wall um so that she can't hear me swearing and things and talking about things we shouldn't say in front of our mothers so um we can put mum down for now we'll put her face down sorry about that mum and we do that every week welcome to everybody here to the Katie's Arms, which is rapidly growing into something that I hadn't imagined. But um, the Katie's Arms is 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 growing in number, uh, it's growing in followers, and more importantly, there's just a lot of us. And whether you're watching this live, hello everybody, hello from Anglesey, um, or whether you're watching this on YouTube, which I don't know what's going on with YouTube either, but it's everything's going crazy at the moment. And I actually think it might be because uh, we've reached that point where it's almost like lockdown feeling again, isn't it? Where people feel like, what the shit is going on? Like that time before when we were all like, what the bloody hell? It feels like that again. And that's why it feels like we all need to hold on to each other. Hello from hell. Um, because everything's just gone to fucking hell in a handcart. Um, and today has been a particularly shit day for everybody, just with, just with the the fear and the bills and the energy stuff and the craziness we're hearing, you're literally like, what the hell is going on in my country? Hi from beautiful Cornwall. Oh, hi from East Greenbush, New York. Yes. <laughs> and this is my New York, my America look. <laughs> and you'll notice lovely Mark has been hard at work. I, I just said to him, I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? I'm like, I'm merch, I'm the merch lady now. Um, so a few things that are very important. Hello from New Zealand, hello. Um, number one, just before we even get onto anything like merch, because you'll know I'm not very, hold on, I've got one of those hairs again. What goes on with me and my hair? Anyway, most importantly, would you take a look? Just, just look, just sit back, have a little, I hope you've all got a drink as well. Don't be leaving me drink alone. I don't like that. Uh, just feast your eyes for one moment, if you may. Just, we'll get to the merch things later. I know you're supposed to talk about that. Hello, Canada. Hello, Tennessee. Um, <laughs> Oklahoma, good to have you with us. Um, hi, Katie from you absolute twat, Carl. If that's South Africa, I apologise. Um, just feast your eyes on these. Hold on, I'm going for the silhouette. I am telling you now, something is going on in the boob department. I, seriously, I had bees before, and now, this isn't, I know we talk about how I pull them up. Look at them. I think they're way heavier than they were. And I reckon, you know how they have, have that thing about how you could put a pen under your boob? I'm going to try that in a minute because I think I could now put, maybe not a pen because they're quite heavy, but I could definitely put like an HB pencil under these. Look, like seriously? I know, someone, what Danny says padding. I mean, there is, but there's, I think there's real girth there now. I don't know what it's about, but this has coincided with, oh, hi from Dubai. Well, hello has coincided with something else that's happened. And I know we will talk about my hat. But I was looking in the mirror earlier. I had to, because I had to get ready. And I thought, well, what's that? Is that just some dirt? And I went like this to get it off. Do you know what? It wasn't dirt. Look, it was weird lines coming down to my mouth. What is that about? Like as if it's like crinkles. Hi from Missouri. Hello. Um, don't know what that stupid accent was for, I apologise. So, is that what it, is that just an, it, what, what happened, did I sleep like this? Is that what's happened? I don't know, because I've been awake for a good, well, I've been awake since 5.30, and what is it, 8 o'clock. So I've been awake for bloody ages, but what are these lines? Menopause, really? Is that why people have that thing done, so that you don't have those lines? I'm getting old, what the shit? How do you stop them? Do you, I don't know, but I never even knew, but there's like four lines. I was perfectly happy 
when I thought it was dirt and now I've realised it's actually my face falling off. That's why people tell me to sleep upside down, isn't it? So that gravity will work the other way. I'm really concerned. I might have to get one of those really big lips. Like, uh -huh. Or maybe I'll just have lines here and that will be fine. But anyway, yes, don't worry about it. Have more wine. Bloody excellent, Phil. Well, excellent. I need to have some sort of point system. Embrace your lines. Exactly. Let's just drink through it. But that happened today and I've never seen them before. Mostly because I try not to look at myself more than I have to. But honestly, okay, we'll drink through it. Hmm. Is this going to be one of these hard drinking sessions? I think it is. Can I say as well, I know, do, silk pillowcase. Oh, fuck that. I think I'd rather have lines. I can't be slipping off my pillowcase in the night. I already have pillow wars with, um, yeah, barefoot. I know. I'm a cheap date, my husband says. <laughs> Guess what happened at the local pub yesterday? Guess what me and my husband did? Left without paying. We're like a crime family here. I had to go into the pub in front of other punters and say, um, can I settle my bar bill that we walked off with without paying? Dementia, much? My husband was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, we were left without paying. I was like, sorry, pardon what? Like I'm already, you know, plasma pen, Katie. Someone just said pointless shite. Danny? If you're talking about me, you're talking point of shite. Yes, that is what I'm doing. If you're just being rude, if you're just, you know what, offerty piss. If you're just being rude, if you're joining in, no problem. If not, <laughs> offerty piss. So let me get to this offerty piss. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I paid the bar bill. Yes, I did. Greetings from Texas. Mm, love Texas. Guns. This is why America has got it so right. Because right now, imagine if EDF came to my door and I was in Texas, I would be armed. <laughs> I've come to read, read, I've come to read your meter. No, I've come to read your meter. Uh, no, you haven't, darling. <laughs> Fuck it off. <laughs> um, thank you also for all the support from my um, Instagram stuff. We were doing things about call centres this week. About when, you know, when you ring up for help. And it's hard enough to get help anyway, isn't it? because no one lets you know their phone number anymore. It's, it's like a secret. Can I just point those out? I am actually really arching. <laughs> so, no, I've not been drinking, not since we started. So, um, call centers, so they hide their number so you can't call them. And then when you kind of do a whole fr friggin' investigative journalism bit and find their number, like, which takes a degree in like, you know, being Hercule Poirot, you ring them. Not only do they put you on hold for ages and play you music in the hope that you'll drop off, they tell you in a very, very long message before they even give you the friggin' options that you know are gonna piss you off more, they tell you you could have found help online. And you think, no, I fucking couldn't. Because if I could have found help online, I would have, because I don't want to call you, because I don't want to sit waiting for four and a half hours for some twat in Pakistan to not help me with my problem. And as for AI bots, you know, when they say, oh, yeah, I'll use the chat bot. That will really help. Hey, there's a chat bot just waiting to talk to you. About as useful as a cock flavored lollipop. Never ever, please, um, engage with a, a chat bot. Don't even start a conversation. Do not lower yourself to have a conversation with a chatbot. Because all that really is doing is manipulating you to feel like you're being looked after and you're not. Give me a person who speaks my language and understands where I'm coming from and wants to make me feel better. That's it. If not, offerty piss. And on that point. Yeah, trying to get help from anywhere. Exactly. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. Or when they say to you, your call is important to us. Mm, it isn't, is it? This is what I say when I'm, I'm hot. Your call is important. It's not, is it, British Airways? Because if it was, you'd employ some people who gave a shit. Instead, your call centre is working from home, which essentially means they're doing fuck all whilst pretending to work from home. And just, I have a friend who shall remain nameless. And House of Fraser yesterday, exactly. Option two, if you want to speak to a rebound. Option three, for Jerry Deacon. 
up <laughs> you think I should do a call centre recording? <laughs> Option five. If you've only got one arm and you're finding it difficult to hold the phone. <laughs> that's not, that's not funny at all. <laughs> British Airways. Yeah, they're not even, okay, here's my tinfoil hat. This is what I wouldn't say normally, but we can say it here because it's Katie's arms. I don't think British Airways is even functioning as a functioning company. I think they haven't been functioning as a functioning company for three years more. I think they're a scaffolding of a company, oh, British Airways, but behind it is just the government and they are now doing everything. The government says, Carl Flight, stop this, stop that, don't have fun on flights, don't let them drink, don't give them food, make them queue up, don't have enough people serving so that everyone just thinks, fuck it, I'm not flying anymore. I think British Airways are actually part of the whole thing of taking us apart. That's what I think. But anyway, hello from Detroit. Wow, I love Detroit. Adam says, press option one for Katie's flaps. Any of you that came to Blackpool will know about my flaps in some detail. Um, I talk about them. <laughs> you know, humiliating myself is a big part of trying to make us all feel better, isn't it? And we have discussed the fact that my <whistles> ladies bits, you know, it's like a spaniel's ears against the moonlight. The silhouette, I mean, nothing like what they see on, on whatever it is. Where is it that they have those clothing where the ladies literally are built like a Barbie doll? I don't know. Keeping it real. I've got no options. What are my options? Pretend I don't have weird lines that make my face look like someone sat on my face. I mean, I could only dream of such things. These bits, they look nothing like those girls on those adverts. It's just like... How did I describe it? What are those sea creatures with the wings like this? Someone's going to need to help. I just howled with laughter. Um, what um, what are those sea creatures called that almost appear to fly? Someone help me. Everything you say is right, not all popular. No, I know. And people say to me, you're right. I think you're right 80% of the time. And I'm like, are you saying that when you agree with me, I'm right? Because that's such a weird idea, isn't it? That would suggest that when they agree with me, they think I'm right, as in they're right all the time. And when we agree, that means I'm doing the right thing. And it's weird because none of us are right. We just have opinions and that's fine. Manta Ray, good man. So that is how I see my, did, is Mumsy down? Let's just check. Mumsy, you better be watching Monty Don. Otherwise, seriously, we're gonna have a falling out. My poor mother. Right, hold on. So my labial folds, don't tell him. see them. People are going to say she's drunk. I'm not. They're not a stingray, darling. It's not stingy. Ooh, who wants stingy flaps? Mm. So I see them like a manta ray flapping away. That's what we talked about in Blackpool. <clears throat> I'm so gross. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on, shall we? Let's let's move on. So much we want to talk about, darling, so much. Anyway, I'm supposed to have told you about these. <laughs> Lovely Mark will be very cross. So yes, look, here's, here's a red one. Here's a white one. We're going to do it as we go. <laughs> what a vision. I know. Imagine. Imagine living with someone whose labial folds are like a manta ray. <sighs> I fear for anyone who goes near them. I tell Lovely Mark that. I fear I might suffocate the poor fellow. <laughs> They're wrapped round his face like an octopus on a diver in a wetsuit. <laughs> you may never see lovely Mark again if he ever went in that direction. <laughs> stay near the, stay near this end. <laughs> Don't go near the business end. <laughs> no. Do I, <laughs> can I get a tune off them <laughs> on the can I get, can I get, let's move on from your flaps, Joanne, that's such good advice. Can you get a tune off them on a windy day? <laughs> oh my God. This is why people are so great. Because, um, you know, I, I find myself funny, but occasionally you meet people who just share that same sense of humour. <laughs> 
Flap obsession, I know. Right, stop it. Katie, you need locking up. I know. I know. <laughs> right, look. Look at what I just did whilst we discussed my flaps. We are moving on. We are moving on. Off to piss, my darlings. In red, white and blue. Or red, blue and white, as I have done here. Or off to piss. <laughs> Lovely Mark's gone wild. He's gone wild with the idea. He's been lobbied intensively by you guys, which I love. Flapping hell. <laughs> I'm going to try them and, and try and get my flaps to play Jerusalem. <laughs> I know. Off the piss. Now, let me tell you why I love these. I know we're all broke. I know no one's got any money. And I believe me, I couldn't give a shit about money. I'm not trying to make money out of this shit. But I just want us to have a way of feeling better. And lovely Mark totally got this. And I had it in America last time I travelled when it was the whole mask. Are you wearing a mask? Put your mask your mask on your nose. Your mask on your nose, they would shout at me. <laughs> oh sweet Jesus. Come to Blackpool, I tell you, on the 10th of September, we have so much fun. It's really, it's nothing there's nothing like it out there. That's what I'll tell you. There are <laughs> There hasn't been a big call for old ladies taking the piss out of their vagina. I don't know what. When I was travelling and people would say, Ah, your mask! I always, and I would have a way about me, you know, and I would see others, especially like gun-toting Texans and stuff. Or we had our MAGA hats, or we had ways of identifying ourselves. Uh, I could go down the aisle of an aeroplane and I would take my mask down once I'd boarded because what are they gonna do? Shout at you again, fine. But, and I'd take my mask down just to look at all of the sheep with their masks on and be like, oh, you, you know, you prick. Or the Asian gentlemen in their full hazmat suits sweating profusely, like sweat just pissing from their bodies, but at least they weren't getting COVID. Drank picking 450 litres of water just to make through the flight. Anyway, I always wanted us to have um, something that would make you feel like, yeah, sure, I'll do what you say. But you know what? I know who I am. And also a way of if you saw someone else with one on, you'd know that we were this family that we are. You spoke at the National Federation of Republican Women in Orlando. Oh, my goodness, did we laugh. That was after Ron DeSantis spoke, wasn't it? <laughs> Rubbing myself up against Ron. Let's not go back there. But we had so fun. It was so fun. And I always believe that about speakers. So when I do speeches at events, I find so often, particularly with boys on the circuit, um, is if they stand there and they tell you everything, all the bad news. And they stand and tell you how China is going to take control and how there's a new world order and how we're going to lose all of our freedoms and negative, 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 and how the election was stolen and da, 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 da. And it's all very well and it's all very dramatic and it's all very serious, but it's so much harder to lift people up. It's so much harder to understand where we're at and to bring people to a place where they leave that room feeling better about themselves. And that's all I ever try and do. I acknowledge where we're at. I acknowledge how difficult it is. I have a personal experience of being, you know, got at in every way possible, including, you know, fatwas and all the rest of it. And um, uh, I still believe, you know, that we have to come out of this as positive. And it's why I am massively positive now, even when we're going to go into a winter from hell, because my job partly will be helping us all get through. Um, so, so that's how I feel about all of that. And that's why there's also laughter, because I think you have to come out this really positive. But anyway, the offty piss pins, the idea is that you could wear one. And even if people demand that you wear a mask or whatever, and even if you have to, to get to do the thing you need to do, you will have this and you'll be able to know that in your head and in your heart, you're saying offty piss. And you'll also know that you're part of this big family that we all are, that, um, Katie, I wanted to go to one of your tours, but I feel like people wouldn't want me there because I'm South Asian. Are you fucking kidding me? Don't be a tard. Seriously, don't be a tard. You walk into any event, anywhere I am, Trafalgar Square, on the road in America, California, wherever, and everybody in that room just wants the best for you. So do not try and make anything about our side to do with race or religion or 
at your age or your whatever, the biggest, strongest gay men I know come, the, the smallest, oldest old lady comes and everybody gets along. Never try and pretend that our, our events wouldn't be welcoming. That's bonkers. And in fact, the reason people come and the reason people come to rallies I'm at is because it's like a carnival of people being lovely to you. They'll look after you, they'll help you, they'll hold your back, they'll lift you up if you fall. It's such a great team, this. Anyway, so that's what these are. And Mark went wild. So we have pens so that you could say to someone, oh, sure, I'll sort that out for you. Oh, would you like a pen, by the way? Because it says offer tea piss. Or if you wanted to get, say you have a couple of special mates who saw you through lockdown because they stood by you when everyone else was scared of going to Asda in case they caught something off the dirty people. Anyway, Mark's got them. Um, so we go to Katie's Arms, which is lovely Mark. He's landlord at katiesarms.com. And the pins, he told me this. He told me this. I'm supposed to know this. Don't tell him I don't know things. He told me things and he wrote it down. Look. He doesn't really trust me to tell people things. And if he watches this, he'll be like, love, you asked for pins or a hat. And I did them and you talked about your manta ray. <laughs> How I'm still married, I don't know. And honestly, I'm going to come to the pricing. Can you tell I don't give a shit about money? Um, not because we've got loads or anything, because people have taken it <laughs> a few times. Um, but just because I just want everyone to be okay. Um, my first husband, I was married less than a year. And he knows this. I investigated because I was good mates with a lot of Marines. Instead of getting divorced, um, I thought it would be easier just to get a hitman because I felt like that would be more like hygienic. If you think from a military perspective, nobody wants to kind of, if there's something painful, you don't want to stagger about with it. Thank you, katiesarms.com. Um, so I was like, oh, you know what? I'll get a hitman out because if I just sort of end my husband, that will make it a lot cleaner. And also I could tell the children like, oh, it's very sad. You know, your father passed away. <laughs> but anyway, that didn't work out. So we got divorced and everything's fine now. But um, where was I? Oh, yes. Why Mark hasn't divorced me? We don't know. So <laughs> offer tea piss. So if you would like, yes, mm, merchandising, if you'd like to go to katiesarms.com, you can find it there. Lovely Mark put it there because he's sensible and organised. And you can get standard mailing, but Royal Mail are on strike. So when it's going to show up, I don't know. But you know what? If you're on the edge of your seat waiting for your pin to come, Jesus Christ, you need something else in your life. I mean, God knows, get a sex toy or something. Pens are £2.50. I'm not sure what the cost price is, but I'm very willing to tell you if I knew it. I think it's about £2.25. <laughs> because actually they're nice, because Mark wouldn't use pens that were shit. Because Mark's Mark. And the pins, as I told you, they're not just any pins. Oh no, hold on, watch this. I know, my massive nipples coming into focus. Look, they're shiny and they are the same pins as at the House of Parliament, except these are terrific because they say offity piss and you can wear them when someone's pissing you off and you don't even have to tell them it's there. You can know it's there. And in a moment of weakness, when you're about to poke some twat wearing a mask outside in the face, you can hold your pin, think of us, and think, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. <laughs> you want an offty piss vibrator? I do hope Mumsy didn't hear that because that's terrible. Now these, hold on, I'm looking, I'm referring to the notes, £2.50. And they come in red or white or blue, as you can see, modelled here. I was going to wear them here and here, but lovely Mark told me I wasn't allowed which totally means I have to do it now. Hold on. Someone just wrote the state of it on here about me. The thing is, I'm not sure the whole nipple thing will work because I don't know if I can find my nipples. And I think I might make them wonky, which, I mean, I don't, no, they're not, are they? Oh dear, that's not where my nipple is. Hold on. Oh yes. So you could have opt. I feel like I should do the other one, shouldn't I? Mark's literally. Oh, T-shirts, now you mention it. Of course, lovely Mark's working on those, but they have to be really, really high quality, otherwise we're not allowed them because it's lovely Mark. 
So let me tell you. Oh yes. So oh, 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 could you wear them on your NHS blues? Oh, you must. You must wear them inside the NHS. Oh, oh dear. Hold on. That is not a good. Oh no, that's not a good nipple look. But uh, I supposed to have told you, wasn't I, that they are how much are they? Two pounds. A whole two pounds fifty. I think they cost more than that to make, but I literally couldn't care. And um, oh, that's. Oh, still not the best nipples, is it? Wait, wait. So you two can have off for piss nipples. I mean, I would suggest you try and get them more even, to be honest, because I'm not sure that is the look any of us were hoping for. <laughs> Never mind. £2.50 on the website. Oh, he's doing, he's gone like, it's gone all Lord Sugar, except a lot taller with a lot bigger penis. Um, I know. Let's just say, lovely Mark could pole vault without equipment. But you can find these badges on the website and he's doing three, three for a fiver. Uh, you're a beast. I know, I know. I am unbearable, truly. I can only ask for your apologies. I can only ask for forgiveness, darlings, because I'm not going to stop. Not till the day I die. And damn it, I'm going to die standing up, pissed as a new naked in a field hopefully. And my children already know that my ashes are to be scattered somewhere hot and tropical. And the real reason for that is it means they all have to go somewhere hot and tropical when I'm dead. And that will cheer them all up. I'm suggesting Puerto Morelos in Mexico because frankly we all need to go to Mexico tomorrow because life there makes a lot more sense. Um, anyone? Yes. So important things, important things. I'm going to put up the American tour dates on Monday. On Monday going to be brilliant. We've got a San Diego one in a gallery with another funny woman whom I love and you're all going to come to that on Coronado Island. Yes, um, 10th of September in Blackpool. I literally cannot wait for that event and I'm, I'm going to bring these, not just my nipples because oh, oh damn they're really wonky. Um, can I print off to piss on the back? Yes. Um, you proper look like you've got ADHD. I probably have. We're all on the spectrum somewhere, darlings, and the best of us are weird. I tell my children, I've told them from the beginning of their days, all the best people are weird, and I absolutely mean it. Um, and some of my own children have things going along, as some of you know, but all the best people are weird. The, the worst thing you could try and be ever is normal, and I think one of the worst things you could try and do is to fit in. Uh, and that's why I've see you in Weymouth. Yes, yes, American tour dates. They're coming. There's a lot. It's going to be epic. Um, I think. And I, I need, yes, I've told you about that. I've done so good. We've got three minutes left. How am I doing? Oh, Scotland. I've got news for Scotland. So we know about this. I told you about this. I told you about these. I did good, right? Mark will be happy with me. Go to katiesarms.com. If you want to leave a message for lovely Mark, poor, long-suffering, lovely Mark. It's landlord at katiesarms.com. Just chat to him. Just chat to him. Chat to him, make him feel better. Maybe for an attractive female that doesn't have these and has like really great boobs, not wonky nipples. Chat to him. Just give him your sympathies, you know, for being married to me and the manta ray. Don't let that image disturb you tonight when you go to bed, thinking about my manta ray, flapping gently in the breeze. <laughs> oh my god and otherwise I don't know what to say really other than thank you thank you for um all your support thank you for all that look oh shout out to Yaverland Isle of Wight I so want to come to Isle of Wight and do a do stand up with you guys we'll have so much fun and so much so importantly it's about being in a room together so important for people to realize our side is so great when we're together and honestly it doesn't matter how weird you are or what's wonky on you because we're all wonky and most importantly I just wanted to say quickly um just to hold the line remember last time we talked about this sort of stuff I feel it today coming over people saying they feel teary or they saw a picture of the dogs and then cried but they don't know why and I feel it coming people are holding and I see it when I'm with people it's like a reservoir of of upset inside them behind their eyes in their head in their hearts 
And um, when we see each other, you know, and people know it's all right, people just cry because you're walking around with it. And it's because of the uncertainty. It's because you live in a country where you can't believe this has happened to people. It is really hard to imagine living in a country where we're talking about heat banks, where our elderly or poor, ordinary people, I mean ordinary British people, working people, will go for eight hours a day just to try and feel warm. It's unbelievable that that's our country. And it's unbelievable that some twat like Macron, who is, I mean, the things I could tell you. Just think Michael Gove, Macron, mm -mm -mm, says the age of abundance is over. Abundance? Our ordinary British people, working people, are going to places just to spend the day, just to be warm. I mean, don't even. So I, I feel this coming. And what we have to do is hold on all together. We have to get through this winter and we will not let the people decide to make the rational decision to end their lives because we, Katie's Arms, is going to be open. And this family is going to put a little rope around your waist. And all we're going to ask you to do is, you know, when you've got, <laughs> look at these, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to say something serious now, aren't I? It's ridiculous. Um, we're going to throw a rope around your waist and we're literally just all we're going to ask you to do, you know, like if you've got something around you, you just lean back on it, right? You're just going to lean back on it and we're all going to hold on to it and we're going to pull you through. So that's how this is going to work. That's how the Katie's arms are going to work. That's how these badges are going to work. And um, damn it, once we get, I don't know how many of these out there, if you see someone else wearing one, know that we're part of that. You've got part of this rope, you know? And we're going to hold on to it all together. And we're going to get through this. If I see any of the fuckers who are against us, I'm going to get that rope and I'm going to put it around their scrotum as small and as, mm, as it is, and I'm going to pull it tight. Fucking people. Okay, my darlings, go. Go do your weekend. Remember, stay away from the noise. Don't listen to all the things that are upsetting because you already know them. Stand outside, breathe the air. Remember, there's a rope behind you. Anytime you need to feel it, actually physically get something, put it behind your waist and know that we're many and we will get through this together if it's the last bloody thing I do. Um, and um, for now, uh, go and go and drink wine, wrap a blanket around yourself, put your jimmies on, take your underwear off, jiggle your boobs about, whatever it takes to get you through. That's what we'll do. Um, I hope you all enjoy your weekend and I'll see you next week for the Katie's Arms. And um, until then, Mark and I will be mailing out offity piss badges, like crazy things, trying to keep people linked in any way we can. Okay, have a great weekend and I'll See you next week.